Does loudspeaker sensitivity affect performance values? Okay, um, this question comes to us from Carl in Segfield County, England, and he writes, Hi Paul, does the sensitivity of a speaker have any relationship to the quality of sound? Yes, it does, and we'll talk about it. I'm asking, as a while ago I purchased a Cyrus One HD amp and connected it to my Martin Logan Aeons. I enjoyed how it sounded, but after a friend brought round their Focal 802s with a higher sensitivity, the difference in volume at the same setting was impressive. Uh, I get the 3 dB increase takes twice as much power stuff. But it got me thinking, why are speakers not designed to be efficient? Is efficiency gained at the expense of sound quality? The Focal sounded fantastic, different to my Logans, but still great. If it's not, why don't manufacturers make ultra high efficiency speakers that you could connect, say, a uh, tube amp rated at 15 watts that would blow your socks off with volume, but uh, sound sweet over a 100 watt amp and fill a concert hall? Well, certainly there are plenty of high efficiency speakers out there, avant-garde's, I mean they're 98, 99, couple of watts, and you're blowing your socks off. But there is a reason why loudspeaker manufacturers don't go crazy with that kind of stuff, and I'll detail some of the reasons for you. Chris Brunhaver, our speaker guru, would be, would be much better at this, but, but, I, but I know something, um, and I'll share with you what I know. Uh, probably the biggest reason that loudspeaker manufacturers don't go nuts, uh, and, by, and by nuts I mean 96, 100 dB, is because of bass response. Bass response suffers greatly, and how, how does it suffer? Well, it's, it's box size. Okay, so you could have, and if you, you, you remember some of these big giant JBL corner horns and the, uh, you know, these, these uh, Altec Lansings, they were very efficient. And they were very efficient a long time ago because amplifiers didn't have much power. It wasn't a question of, well, just throw a 100 watt amp. Or they didn't have 100 watt amps, they didn't have 200 watt amps. And if they did, they were super expensive and nobody got them, right? So your average, amplifier back in the day was 10, 20, 30 watts. Maybe, maybe a big one was 50 watts. That was pretty big. They were all vacuum tubes and, and that's why they had to make efficient boxes. Now those boxes were very large and they didn't have great bass, but they had decent bass. So here's something to ponder. For every 3 dB of efficiency, we lose one octave of bass, okay? So if you build a speaker, let's say, with a reasonable efficiency, 88, 90 dB, okay? And that speaker was capable of going down to, I don't know, 30 hertz, okay? If we wanna make it now 93 dB, it's going to be 60 hertz. And if we want to make it 96 dB, it's going to be 120 hertz. Each one of those is an octave. So as the efficiency goes up, the base goes away. How can we fix that? We can make the box larger. But it isn't all that easy because for every 3 dB of efficiency or sensitivity, the box has to become eight times larger in square in, in volume, eight times. So if you start with a box like this, just to get that 3 dB of efficiency and to keep the, the base, I mean, I don't know, it's gonna get big really quick, okay? Other reasons. Um, efficiency is a function of mass. So for a given amount of energy, you're trying to move the mass of, let's say, a woofer, okay? So what do they do? Well, you can make the cone material have considerably less mass, weighs less, right? But when you do that, you, you can only do it so much without the cone starting to break up um, to become problematic to start doing what we call a woofer cry or cone cry to where it starts breaking up and, and making funny noises at, at, at its breakup points. 
So there's a real fine balance between having enough mass to keep the cone stiff enough without being sucked in and all of that, um, and being efficient. Uh, another way you can gain efficiency is by shortening the voice coil because voice coils are heavy. And so if we make a shorter voice coil, we can actually save a lot of mass, but we suffer linearity. Because if, if a voice coil is very small, then any kind of movement for the speaker takes it out of the linear gap of the speaker. So those are just some of the compromises that we have to run into in order to make a speaker more efficient. And um, it's, it's it, you know, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. <laughs> and that's why. So, yeah, you're, you're, it, look, everything's a trade off, right? Everything is a trade off. And so you have to just find that happy balance that gets you what you want. Great question. Thanks for asking. Talk to you tomorrow.